Hello, we are doing a screencast of exercise 3 of module 1. Notice uh, the topic of this is indentation and spacing. The activity in this exercise is to fix ugly code to make it human readable. Now Java is an interesting language because the compiler doesn't care how the code is arranged in the source files. All it does is read keywords and variable content. So this is the registration class that I just commented for exercise 2 and I have made it look all yucky and I want to walk through why I'm making the changes that I am. To first prove to you that Java does not care how the code looks on the screen I see that I have no compile errors because I have a, a green forward arrow and I can run this file so run file and notice I have the output that I had before and it doesn't care that now I have all of my curly braces and lines broken up and it's a big mess so again this is for humans but humans have to write good code so it um, pays to take time to make sure that we are formatting code correctly the first thing to think about is that in Java we have blocks of code that open and close with curly braces and then we have statements. That's all we've got. Blocks of code do not end in semicolons. Everything else ends in a semicolon. You'll notice that when I'm trying to sort out my code, if I click my cursor right after a curly brace or a parenthesis, the pairing, uh, so if I'm at the opening, it will pair up my closing parenthesis or curly brace by highlighting it. So if I come here, I say, all right, I've got a class, it's called registration, and I have an open curly brace. It finishes off here. So I shouldn't be starting my method on the same line that I'm opening my class. So I can put my cursor before public, and notice that it defaulted to an indent, one indent in from the left margin of public class. This indentation signals that this line of code is inside the public class registration. This is very handy because we might have several levels of nesting and we've got to keep all that straight or we'll go bonkers. So as we've seen before, this is a method declaration. It should be on one line. Public, static, void, main. Now one way to edit this is uh, to use your keyboard. I really encourage you to learn your keyboard shortcuts. An important one is we can select uh, multiple uh, chunks of characters by holding down the shift key and then using the arrows back and forth and it will select everything in between the arrows as I go uh, this is me arrowing right and arrowing left so I would need to delete all this space so I have it selected and then all I have to do is hit backspace and add a space so that was an easy way to fix indentation so this line looks good I declare a method this is a block declaration, so it end, it o this line ends with an open curly brace, and we can see it highlighted the closing, which is handy. So no semicolon here. If I put a semicolon there, I get yellow squiggles. Now yellow, yellow squiggles means it will still compile and run, but it's not uh, good form. So no, no semicolon there. Now my system out print lines are inside my main method, so they need to be indented twice. Now NetBeans will help us with that by defaulting to that indentation level. So I need to clear out all of this uh, space. So what I did was I'm indented twice. Tab will indent and Shift Tab goes back indent. So I could back indent this method and then I can hit Tab and, and move it forward. Take a moment and try Tab and Shift Tab. All day long we can indent. What we don't want to be stuck doing is spacing things because it'll get all messed up and we'll waste time. So I'm going to uh, use my home and end key. Practice using home and end. Home moves me to the beginning of a line. End moves me to the end of the line. Look on your keyboard for home and end. Everyone used home and end 10 years ago. And now keyboards, for some reason, are making these buttons much harder to get to. You should get a keyboard if you're going to program that has a home and end key that you can press without holding down control or any other crazy key. So I, I use home and end to go to beginning and end of line. I'm going to hit enter once to give my uh, 
to get my automatic double indent. Then I'm going to use that trick with shift and arrow keys to highlight all of the intervening space that I want to get rid of. So notice I am my cursor is ready to hit backspace and all of that disappeared and my system out has started at the proper level of indentation. I'm going to use my end key to go to the out. Notice that somehow that got all messed up. So I'm going to do that. I did the down arrow once and now I have that whole line selected. I'm going to keep the shift key held down, hit the home key to select that intervening space. So now I can hit my backspace and I'm all set. Look at that, system.out.println without any spaces, and my end of line, this is the statement, hey, compiler, go print this. I end it with a semicolon. My next system out print line, the only fix I need there is to fix the double indent. So I did uh, tab twice, and now I've got these nice and lined up. They're indented one level in from the uh, left margin of uh, main because it's nested inside main. Now my ending curly braces should not be on the same line as a statement. So I can hit enter. I move that curly brace uh, back justified. Notice my screen shifted over. The, the way that we close blocks is we have the left facing or the closing curly brace at the same level of indent as the block that began it. So I don't want the closing curly brace out here because this is not a block that I'm closing. I am closing this block. So the closing curly brace needs to be lined up with the left margin of whatever I'm closing. Now convention is to close blocks on their own line for readability. So I'm going to move my closing class curly brace to its own line. Notice as I'm moving curly braces I'm watching for the pairing to make sure that I know that this is my close of class. That's caps, I don't need that. And um, so close of class, and this is, ah yes, this is the close of my method, close of method. And so there we have it with indentation. Exercise three is asking you to demuddle a big yucky mess of code. Um, oh, excuse me. Exercise 3 is just tinkering with this. Exercise 4, which I'm not going to screencast, has given you this ugly block. You can cut and paste that into a file called greetingmachine.java and uh, see if you can undo this. Now, this code should run even when it's all ugly, and you will get an output like this. You'll notice that there's code in this class greeting machine that we have not talked about line by line. That's okay. Try reading it, try tinkering with it as you can, and if you can get it to run and it's pretty, you can look at our key here to the refactoring challenge. So good luck and have fun making your code pretty.